Okay, we're going to go through a couple of the questions. This is from exercise 5C, right? So if you were able to do this, you can maybe give me some hints and help me because I'm having to do this for you all now. So in the diagram OAB, sorry, in the diagram, OAB is a sector of a circle, center O. So this is the sector we've got here. And radius, capital R centimeters. The angle uh, AOB, AOB is two theta radians. So I'm actually probably just going to label that one as theta and then that one there is theta rather than doing the whole thing as two theta because clearly that's been split down the middle. A circle center C and radius R touches the arc AB at T and touches OA and OB at D and E respectively as shown. So basically the only thing that wasn't on the diagram was the angles that we had here. Everything else was already included. Um, so first of all, write down in terms of R and R the length of OC. So we want to just find out the length from here to here. Um, anyone think they can spot about how you would find out what that length OC is? Yes, Zahir. Capital R. Pardon? Capital R. Yes, good. It's capital R minus little r because this distance here is little r and this whole distance is... Is that what it's going to be, sorry? Yeah. The length OC from O... Yeah, so the whole thing down is big R. Yeah, 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 yeah. Silly me, silly me. I've, I've labelled the wrong section. <laughs> this distance here is little r, and the whole distance from here to here is big R. So the distance from here to here is going to be big R, take away little r. Oh, yeah, so it's not OEC, is that right? Is OEC is going to be a right so at angle? First I don't ask it, small r squared. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking, but obviously this isn't r squared. Oh, right. No, because R is from here to here, not oh, yeah. from here to here. If it was from here to here, then you could have done Pythagoras to find that distance, yeah, it but it wasn't. That's what I was thinking when I was in initially stood there looking at it. Because I, yeah, I drew it in the wrong place. Using triangle OCE, show that R sine theta equals R brackets 1 plus sine theta. So we have OCE here, and we're going to try and think about how those things are connected together. Hmm. Using the triangle OCE, show that R sine theta equals R brackets 1 plus sine theta. So I might draw out what we have with OCE, just because sometimes when you've got a really busy diagram, it can be quite hard to see what's happening. Um, Haroon, you're right that that is a right angle between OC and E. So here's O, here's E, here's C. Obviously, they've just asked us in the first part of the question to work out what OC is. So OC is capital R minus R. Is there anything else I know that I can add to the diagram? CE -E is? R. Is there anything else I know? Theta. Pardon? Theta. theta. I know that this angle at the top here is theta. And I have to get theta involved because they want us to do something with this. So I've got a right angle triangle with two lengths and an angle. How does it connect together? Opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. I know that sine theta is the opposite, which is R over the hypotenuse, which is r minus r. That's three or four. Pardon? Is that three or four? No, not yet. We're still doing this bit just to show that this is true. So if I multiply this up, I get r minus r bracket sine theta equals r. So that's r sine theta minus little r sine theta equals r. So capital R sine theta equals r brackets 1 plus sine theta, as it shows like that, just from the algebraic manipulation. Now we get to the part of the question where it tells you that sine theta is three quarters and that the sector, sorry, the perimeter of the sector OAB is 21 centimetres and we're going to find out what R is to three significant figures. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is just put in sine theta is three quarters just to see what additional information that's going to tell me. So if sine theta is three quarters, we get three quarters r equals r brackets one plus three quarters, which is seven over four. Seven over four. So we can multiply both sides by four. So three r equals seven little r. And so we can either say that r is equal to seven over three little r, or we could use it the other way around. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to try and find out what little r is equal to. So do you think it's better to have capital R as the subject or little r as the subject? Capital R. It's better to have capital R as the subject 
because then if you do any substitution later on, you will be substituting in little r, which will then help you find out what little r is. Okay? And we're going to try and find out, we need to know, that, sorry, the perimeter of OAB is 21 centimeters. So the perimeter of OAB is going to be R, capital R, plus capital R, plus what? Plus theta r. So this section from here to here is going to be r theta. And then there's going to be another r theta. So it's going to be 2 r, r theta. And we know that sine theta is 3 quarters. So we now have got p is 21 centimeters. We've got 2R. Why is my phone still? Sorry. My phone is on silent, but has now rung twice today, which is really annoying. Plus 2R plus 2R theta. So we can substitute in that R is 7 over 3R. So that's going to be 14 over 3 little r plus 14 over 3 little r multiplied by theta. How can we find out what theta is? Good, you can just do that theta is equal to the inverse sine of three quarters here. And then it's just going to be an awful lot of substituting everything in and finding out what R is. So let's just see how that works out. I haven't even got my calculator out today, which is telling you how hectic my day has felt so far. And you've obviously got to make sure that you are in radians mode for doing this. So what have we got? Uh, 14 over 3 multiplied by the inverse sine of 3 over 4. So I think you've got 21 is equal to 14 over 3 r plus 14 over 3 multiplied by the inverse sine of that. I think you get 8.624 r. And if you do 21 divided by that, you should get that r is 2.43 centimeters. Yeah. Is that the right answer? Yeah. Yeah, if my... So what I did here, which I kind of have skipped out a little bit of a step, is I can see that I've got both of them have an r here. And this is the theta, which is the inverse sine of 3 quarters. I just did 14 over 3 multiplied by the inverse sine of 3 quarters. And I added on 14 over 3 because they were like terms. And when I calculated 14 over 3, plus 14 over 3 times the inverse sine of 3 quarters, I got 8.624. And then I just finished by solving that equation there. So it's definitely more demanding and more complex than the ones that we'd seen before. Um, and there's a lot of like, it's, there's a lot of, I think it's confusing with the two R's. And it's just, yeah, it's just, I think it's a more challenging question than the ones that we came across before. Was it not knowing what to do or was it just the complexity of it? I didn't know what to do with it. It does look intimidating. That's why I, I try to use the beginning of the lessons looking at the more intimidating ones. And I don't do these intimidating ones before you do the exercise, because part of doing the exercise is for some of you to come up against those challenging ones for the first time by yourself, because that's a really important learning experience. But it's also important that we then get a chance to go through it as well. OK? So we will have a look through the next one as well. Were there any? I, I feel like there's probably a couple of questions on this still, because I went a bit fast at this end bit here. No? OK, we'll also have a look at question 12 then. So it says here that we have a circular Ferris wheel, which has 24 pods equally spaced on its circumference. Given the arc length between each pod is 3 pi over 2 meters and modeling each pod as a particle, calculate the diameter of the Ferris wheel. We'll just stick with that, OK? Um, if you didn't draw a diagram for this, you probably didn't do the question very well, OK? As soon as I think of a Ferris wheel, obviously, we're talking about a circle that we've got. And if there are 24 pods around it, I also know something else. What do I know if, I, if there's 24 pods? It's just arc is a 24 of it. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be, it's going to be split into these 24 pieces. So perhaps it's easier to say between two of the pods, what's the angle going to be? Two, 
2 pi over 24. So this angle in here is going to be 2 pi over 24, which is pi over 12. So I'm going to redraw the sector of the Ferris wheel that we're now talking about, where this angle here is pi over 12. And they've told us something else in the question as well. What else have they told us that we think we should use? The length of the arc between two pods is 3 pi over 2. And they want us to find out the diameter. What could I find out that's not the diameter, but basically the diameter? The radius. So I could find out what the radius is. Now, the link is that length equals r theta. So 3 pi over 2 equals r multiplied by pi over 12. So the pi on both sides is going to cancel. And then I multiply both sides by 12. 12 multiplied by 3 over 2 is 18. So the radius is 18 meters, which means that the diameter is 36 meters. Now, they said something interesting here, um, and it was to do with the modeling assumption. What was the modeling assumption? They said, sorry, I know it says it's a particle, but what does it mean that they've been modeled as a particle? Why have they said that the pods have been modeled as a particle? You've got any? Yeah, they don't take up any space because they've said that the length between each pod is 3 pi over 2 meters. But in, real, in a realistic Ferris wheel, the pod is probably going to be like this kind of size. And so what are they talking about? The distance between here and here? Are they talking about the distance between the centers of the pods? So by modeling them as particles, we're just saying from the center of each of the pods. So that's why they've done that modeling assumption. We've been able to ignore how big the pods actually are. And they haven't said that, but you know, it might be worth something for them to think about. Part B of the question says, given that it takes approximately 30 seconds for a pod to complete one revolution, estimate the speed of the pod in kilometers per hour. So if we're trying to do something to do with speed, and um, they've already told us something to do with time, what's the missing piece in that puzzle? Distance. distance. OK, so we need to talk about what is the distance that one of these pods is traveling? How much does one pod travel in one revolution? The circumference. How would we find the circumference? You could either do the diameter times, yeah, you could do the diameter times pi, or it's 24 lots of this, isn't it? It's the same thing. So we're going to say that the distance around the outside is 36 pi. The time that they've said is 30 seconds. It's really important that we remember that seconds and that this is 36 pi meters. And so speed is equal to distance over time. But that is going to be in what units? Meters per second. Meters per second. OK, so in order to go from meters per second, what do we need to do to change it to kilometers per hour? Yeah, so if you think about it at the moment, if this is in meters and you want to change it to kilometers, you would divide by a thousand. Yeah. So you're going to divide by a thousand. Let's just do it one stage at a time. So if I divide it by a thousand, that's going to be in kilometers per second. Then if I want it to be, in, if you're imagining how many kilometers you do in one second, to work out how many you do in one minute, you could times it by 60 and then times it by 60 again. So we're going to then get this answer. And you're going to multiply it by 60, and you're going to multiply it by 60. And that will give you your answer. So you've got 36 pi multiplied by 3,600 divided by 30,000. And you get 13.6 kilometers per hour. So when is that equal to estimate in the question? What does it mean? Because we haven't really estimated the pod. Estimate the speed of the pod. Well. I think it's just because they've said it's approximately 30 seconds. It's very weird because when you would hear estimate in a GCSE question, what would that secretly mean for you to do? Rounding. To do rounding. It, we don't really have that in A-level. So the use of the word estimate there is possibly because of the fact that it's already used the word approximately. 
So I think if it said find the speed of the pod, that would be implying that it took exactly 30 seconds. So I think they're kind of following through with the correct language of saying, well, it's approximately 30 seconds, so like roughly what is the speed? You should still do the calculations as accurately as you can with this one, OK? If there were any other questions, I know a couple of people want to look at 14. Yes, yeah, sorry. So to go from meters per second, I think about really, it's probably easier to go from meters per second to meters per hour and then to go back to kilometers. If you think about what this actually means, meters per second, it means how many meters do you travel in one second? So if you wanted to think about how many meters do you travel in one minute, how many more meters would you travel in one minute rather than one second? 60 times bigger, so you're going to multiply it by 60. And if you want to then go to meters per hour, well, you're going to multiply it by 60 again. And then it might be, I don't know, 13,000, sorry. Yeah, it might, might be like 13,000 meters per hour. Well, to then go to kilometers per hour, you then do the divide by 1,000. So I think it's better to try and start with this kind of logical reasoning of what does the unit mean, and then to work from there. So the unit means how many meters do you go in a second, and then just logically work your way through it rather than just trying to memorize about how that pattern might work. Okay? So normally...